guys, Matt Bell with the Electric Violin Shop. Welcome back to the Classical to Radical series. This week we're going to talk about subjects you really don't ever think about in acoustic or classical music. How the heck am I going to hear myself? And the answer is with a monitor. With an acoustic violin, you can just hear it. You play it, the sound comes out, you can hear it. The electric violin doesn't really make much noise. The other thing is you're typically in a much higher sound pressure environment. You're, there's drums, there's guitars, there's people screaming at you. It's very different from a classical setting. So you probably wouldn't be able to hear your acoustic violin either. You're definitely not going to be able to hear the electric violin. Sound, especially in the higher frequencies, the ones that, that define the edges of the notes, what you need to hear to play, sound is really directional. So the front of house speakers, the big cabinets are pointing at the out audience. They will be out in front of you, for feedback reasons, pointing at the audience. And it may be deafening to the audience, but you're not going to be able to hear those higher frequencies because you're behind those speakers. So in order for you to hear, you're going to need a monitor. And there's three basic ways that uh, a violinist is going to be able to hear himself or herself on stage. There are amplifiers, uh, wedge monitors, or in-ear monitors. So if you plug into an amplifier, you have that amplifier on stage, you just turn it up and point it at your head because that's what your ears are. You'd be surprised how many people point it at the back of their legs and wonder why they can't hear because you don't have ears down there. Be considerate of your bandmates in the audience. Just because you can make your violin the screaming banshee does not mean that you should. This usually leads to stereo wars on stage and you're probably not going to win those. As you, know, as you turn up, now the guitar player can't hear himself, so he turns up. And now the drummer's hitting harder because he can't hear himself. The drummer and guitar player are probably willing to get louder than you are, so don't tempt them. Plus, the louder you get on stage, the less control your front of house engineer has over the overall mix out front, which, believe it or not, is the, the product that you're offering to the crowd. I've seen bands that were probably pretty good, but the crowd couldn't tell because the stage sound was so loud that the front of house guy didn't have any control over the mix and it was just this cacophony of, of noise that's going on and uh, that's just a miserable experience for everybody so um, yeah don't be that band just use some sense make sure that your amp is pointed at your skull where your ears are tip the amp however you need to tip it to point it at your head and uh, and go on about your business just turn it up as loud as you need but no louder The second thing is a wedge monitor. If you watch a rock concert and you see a bunch of speaker cabinets sitting all over the stage, sort of pointed at the musicians, those are called wedges or wedge monitor. If you're plugged into the house system through DI, you're probably going to have a wedge monitor in front of you. Generally, each one of those wedges will have its own mix. That means that the sound engineer can put a different thing into your wedge than he's putting into the other wedge, than he's putting into the other wedge, than he's putting out to the house. Again, the same deal. You want to keep stage sound as low as you can and still be able to hear yourself. So don't put everything in your wedge. Well, I need to hear the guitar, I need to hear the keys, I need to hear, you're probably gonna be able to hear their monitors, okay? So just put what you need in your wedge to start out. Hey, I need my fiddle, I need my voice. And as we get going, if I don't have enough of other stuff, we can start putting a little bit in. But, but generally you wanna start with just you and you know maybe a couple of the quieter things on stage that, that you know you're gonna to have to be able to hear. But it's the same thing. The louder your wedge gets, the more sound there is bouncing around. Just, just be considerate of the people around you and, and your crowd, okay? Also, as you look at that wedge, you should be able to stare straight down the throat of the horn that's in that. Uh, again, those higher frequencies are really directional. If that wedge doesn't have enough angle to it or if you're standing too close to it, sometimes you can even use your DI to tip, you know, you tip that wedge back and stick your DI underneath and that will help tip that wedge back a little further so that it's, you know, so that that horn is pointed right at your head where your ears are. The third possible way to hear yourself on stage is with in-ear monitors. If you are super lucky, you'll have access to in-ear monitors. I've been using them for years and I'm not interested in using anything else. Now you can have your own mix again. And it's not a matter of courtesy because you can turn those things up as loud as you want. You're the only one who can hear them. It becomes a matter of self-protection at this point. You want to make sure that those ears are no louder than you need them to be to hear yourself. You can blast your hearing to smithereens really fast within your monitors if you're not careful. So uh, just sort of use, use a little bit of sense. You shut them off. You can hear what's going on outside the world just a little bit through the bleed, right? Because you can't cut the sound off entirely. And then you slowly turn them up to what you're hearing is just above sort of what's bleeding through from the world. Uh, and that's going to keep you safe. 
that's a pretty brief overview on monitors. If you've got more questions, put them in the comments section or hit us up and we'll be glad to address those in the future. Be sure to hit subscribe so you can check out all the videos in the series and all the cool content coming from Electric Violin Shop. If you want to get more in depth than what we're getting here and uh, you think a Skype lesson would benefit you, I'm available for those. You can hit me up at matt7738 at gmail.com. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.